교체 조성주 시즌 극한의 경기로 선제제 지난번에는 4연수 우승 이번에는 3연수 우승이라는 대기록을 세우게 됩니까? 혜란이 엄청 좋은 것 같아요 회사기들 사이에서 고생 많았다 혜란은 사실 그렇게 좋아 보이지 않는데 형도 좀 넓어졌으면 그냥 내가 잘해 정말에서 도착한 거 조성주의 질주 독주를 누가 막을지 네. 지켜봐야 됩니다. 아프리카 TV, 프리카 스튜디오, 라이브 And we're back. Season three of GSL Code S is here. The final uh, season of the whole year. Uh, I always miss GSL when it's not on for a little bit. The downtime feels too long, um, but it's going to be back here with you. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks, but it feels like it's been longer. We got a new season, a new patch, a new map pool. Yeah. A lot of new life being breathed into this game. And i got to say, this is probably the GSL that I've been looking forward to the most for a while now. It's a big shakeup in the meta. We have a great split of players in. Six Protoss, five Terran. Five Zerg, and with the new maps, it feels like anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, this is a very, very fresh feeling GSL. Uh, day one, the lineup we've got is very exciting. We'll get into that in a little bit, but the fact that we have so many new maps and this new patch, the patch has been out in the Korea server for about a week. Um, we don't know if the changes are going to be dramatic and very obvious at the start, or if this might look like the same game for another week or two. Um, but for me personally, the most exciting part about a new patch is seeing competitive players come together and create new games, new metas, new strategies, new ideas uh, that we get to cast. Yeah, yeah, one of the best parts about it, too, is that, as you said, it's only been live on Korea for about a week now, right? So everybody that's playing here in the GSL, they don't have it all figured out. People are still workshopping their builds. I'm sure that different Terrans, Zergs, and Protoss players all kind of have slightly different concepts of what's going to be best in the new meta and the new patch on the new maps. And that might lead to quite a few different styles that get showcased here, which I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of speculation online, some positive, some negative. Uh, <laughs> some, yes. The current state uh, of StarCraft II <laughs> with this patch. We'll see how founded or unfounded that is. I'm kind of waiting and just I'm going to see how these games actually pan out. Um, we'll talk more about the patch in a second, though. First and foremost, if you want to come and watch our event live, it's every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, we start at 6.30 p.m. KST. Tickets go on sale on Friday at, uh, I believe they told me 5.30. 5.30. Yeah, they're, they're my goldfish memory. They told me that 10 minutes before we started. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, I hope I say this right. Um, but uh, usually for the first couple days, I'd say the first four or five days, we don't always sell out. So if you don't get a ticket immediately, you could still buy one online a day or two after, or even if you come down here, you can buy it online on your phone. They can help you do that um, and get in. You can watch some, some good old StarCraft. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And same format we had before. It's going to be every Tuesday, Thursday, heading up until the finals week. And then on the second, I almost said the 12th, I got tripped up there by the change of the months. Semifinals and finals right there on that Thursday. So it's going to be a very big day. And of course, thank you all so much for contributing to GSL and really the StarCraft II community as a whole has come together since we lost publisher support and not just supported the Korean StarCraft community, but really the whole global StarCraft community. And so from our bottom of our hearts, bottom of our hearts, excuse me, thank you. Multiple it's hearts. Uh, you know, multiple I hearts. have many StarCraft hearts. <laughs> you don't know how much I love this game. Um, look, the support is appreciated. You know, this is sort of how StarCraft One started uh, in Korea. It was really backed by fans and, and by companies that believed in it. Blizzard was with us for a little bit there in a, I guess a nice way to put it would be a transformative period. Um, yeah. And so we're relying on support again. So if you can, uh, you know, come out and send us some love, we do appreciate it. Because uh, without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So, uh, you know, uh, StarCraft 2 lives on. Here we are, the third season. I've actually lost count of how many seasons we've done. It's somewhere in the 40s. 
It's a lot of could seasons. Be, could be 50s even. I don't know. I feel like it's been even more than that. It's been, what, 13 years? Going on 14 pretty 13 soon. 13 years, and we had a couple years with three or four seasons. This one is two. But then the first, uh, I think, two or three years, we had like a lot of GSL. five or six seasons. <laughs> it was a so lot was, of GSLs. That was fun. I don't miss it. That was a lot of casting. I didn't play almost any games those years. <laughs> I was just in a studio the whole time. Um, but, yeah, we're still going strong. You can see at the bottom of the screen, we've got a big uh, new map pool here. Yeah, so. nine maps for, if I'm not mistaken, the first time in StarCraft II history, we have nine maps in the 1v1 pool. I mean, maybe, maybe there was sometime very long ago nine maps, but not that I recollect, and so... No, I don't remember anything this big either. We are going to be uh, letting each player ban three maps because we have that many maps here now, so... Yeah, the bans are going to be a little bit different. You get one more ban than usual, and so that's how we're going to play around having nine, but one of those things that's really a re positive shakeup is having more maps to play on. It's going to be a lot of fun. We could see some potentially unique strategies on some of the more uh, quite out there maps. We have a little bit of experimentation yeah. this season, but... Neither here nor there. We got the groups for the round of 16 today. Group A, Maru, Scarlet, Creator, and Solar. It's going to be a fantastic group. Every single group has a Terran and a Protoss. Almost all of them have a Zerg. Yeah, I mean, this is a crazy group to start this off. Obviously, if you're watching this stream in the English language, you're probably pretty hyped to see Scarlet playing. Um, look, I think she's got a shot. She always seems to have a shot. Um, but... This is a really tough group. Maru, Creator, Solar. Yeah. Creator, you know, he's been inconsistent in the past, but lately he has really improved. And he always comes into every GSL really hungry, really motivated, um, ready to go. And Solar's been so impressive. As you can see, every, every season at GSL, we have a theme. This theme is that the players are a checkers board, which is cool. <laughs> checkers board, I like that. I remember I walked into the studio, I saw those big red scarves they had, and I just started laughing. It's like, all right. Is it a scarf, or is it actually part of the hoodie? I think oh, it's it actually part, part of the, of the hoodie. hoodie. I got to get better glasses, If man. these guys yeah. were villains, they would have to work for Two-Face. <laughs> for me, with was, outfits like this. I was imagining, like, it's all these, like, big red scarves they have. Like, they come into, like, a hooded, like, cabal into oh, the yeah, GSL yeah. studio at the beginning. <laughs> But um, going back to the point you were making earlier, looking at this from Scarlet's perspective, I feel like this is about as bad a draw in a group as you can possibly get. You have Maru, who is just the greatest of all time, Korean StarCraft II player bar none, as your first opponent. Creator, his best matchup is PBZ by far, and Solar also has been on another level recently. But this guy right now, Maru, big question is, can anybody stop him this year? Well, he's kind of run away with StarCraft II in Korea. He has been looking untouchable. Um, I, you know, I don't know if he even needs to do anything new with the patch and the way the game has changed for just how mechanically good he is, how strategically sound he is. Um, I feel like he is going to advance no matter what. If he doesn't advance here today, it's already the craziest upset we could possibly have here uh, in this round of the GSL. Yeah, I'd be shocked if Mara didn't advance from this one. I mean, back-to-back -back first place finishes to start off this year. Going to try and look for the clean sweep in this GSL. I don't even know we're going to start calling it. What, G G8L, G9L, GL, GGL? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, we did get a chance to talk to uh, Scarlet briefly before she went down to plug in her equipment and get ready to play. She seems to be in good spirits. Very relaxed, pretty positive. Aware this group is very hard. Yeah. But um, not really letting that affect her. I was surprised, honestly, by how confident she is coming into this group because it really feels like almost a David versus Goliath story with the sure. odds stacked against her, especially with Maru as your first opponent here in Code S. But Sasha, she, she felt like Maru, it's going to be a very tough opponent to beat, but creator, solar, possibly beatable. There is a chance that she advances into the round of eight. All right. It's time to get this going. It is a best of three, standard GSL format. Winner goes to the winners, losers goes to the losers. Uh, and we're going to be on three very different maps. Again, new patch, new maps, um, potentially new play styles, new strats, all that. I think that rhymed. That was kind of cool. That was very uh, cool, yeah. That was like a <laughs> Dr. Seuss book right this there. This may be more of an exploratory cast here as we see exactly how this is going to look. We're ready, guys. Game one of Group A is starting now. Side Maru. Oh, 
Shopify Rebellion, Scarlet. Okay, so immediately Maro is going to go in uh, with a wall in down here on the low ground. Here it is natural. Scarlet is going for hatchery first. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited with the new patch, the new maps and everything, what kind of games they're going to be having here. Yeah. It looks like he sends his second uh, SCV down. And this build, by the way, is not new. No. This is, this is something we've seen a lot of here. I feel like we especially saw this with Beyond early on, but mm -hmm. um, it does seem like it's spread from everywhere. From Denmark, welcome. Glad you welcome. could make it. We have a lot of global fans here today. Yeah, we do. Ready to cheer for Mario, cheer for Sasha. We saw him slowly trickling in. I love watching that. People, is this the right place? This building, <laughs> does, this building doesn't look like there should be a TV studio here, and people kind of wandering around the hallways and. Especially even like coming into the lobby, it feels yeah, like you're in an office yeah, building. Yeah. It's like, wait, am I, am I coming to somebody's yeah, workplace? Yeah. What's going on here? But if you're if you're coming to the studio and you're not sure if you made it, just keep going and you'll, you'll find out soon because you're either definitely in the right place or definitely in the wrong place. But it's gonna feel like you're in the wrong place the whole time until you finally get there. Um, so yeah, this is a strategy we saw Byun do a lot, and it seems like it's really affected the play style of all the other Terran players. They've seemed to have picked up on it. They like it. The idea is you have. Uh, Reapers, but not with that normal one racks pressure where the tempo is pretty easy to control. Instead, you have two coming out. Oh, fans Hell coming yeah. from the USA. Oh, it's, look at this. You printed that That's out. That's a special sign that wow. they made. And she's drinking hot six. They know exactly what to do. That's next level. That's next level. <laughs> they went down to Kinko's or something yeah. before that, man. <laughs> Got a poster board printed yeah. up. That's the first time I've seen that here at a GSL. So the, uh, the Reapers are coming forward. They're continuing to uh, put a little bit of pressure on here. It does seem like the longer this build is out with every passing week of GSL, the, the better the Zergs were at dealing with it. Oh. He oh. does not get that kill, unfortunately, on that. Yeah, very clutch, turning that drone into a sport crawler right there. One shot away from getting taken out. And I'm kind of surprised to see Maru going back into the bread and butter that is Byun's two racks Reaper expand build here. I was you know, wondering whether we're going to see some Cyclone shenanigans. Of course, the Cyclone now on the new patch. You no longer need a tech lab to pump that thing out. So a lot of Terran players in the current TBZ meta, they like to open with one factory reactor. They get Cyclones out, they get some Hellions out, and they kind of play a little bit of Battle Mech in the bio. But Mart is going back to the classic TBZ. I mean, why not if it works? Keep in mind, you know, Maro, he always comes into a GSL expecting to go all the way. So he's very good at kind of oh. economizing what builds he chooses. Not, uh, not even a kill on that one Reaper. Gets the... Uh, Creep tumor and gets back out. Uh, and to the point I was making earlier, I think he perceives Sasha or Scarlet as one of the weaker players out of all mm. the Zergs he has to go up against. So maybe he's storing some of his other builds for other players. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, especially a player like Maru with the amount of depth that he has in his repertoire. I I'm sure that there's a ton of builds he has lined up, especially with Solar in this group as well. You know, he might not just need a battle through Scarlet, but he might very well be facing Solar in the winner's match to advance, so. TVC certainly be one of the matchups that Maru has prepared the most for coming into the round of 16. Well, Scarlet macroing up, taking the linear third base, just expanding along the top side. Maru went for a third command center relatively quickly here on the main base. That is before Starport, so. Going to be a little bit heavier on the bio, lighter on the medevacs, at least for now. Yeah, I'm curious how quickly he can land that. Do you just want to try to make SCVs out of that for a little bit um, before you actually drop it down? You can see Scarlet came down with the Zerglings. One feature about any Terran that has spawned on the left side of the map is that the add-ons are going to stick out because they come out on the right, but clearly there were too many Marines to actually kill the, the add-on with those Zerglings and deny stem. Your fourth base going to be coming in for Scarlet pretty soon. Taking that third expansion and the armory coming in for Maru. Now, I actually missed this. Does he already have an engineering bay with an upgrade? I, I don't think so. So, this armory is at an interesting. Yeah, is he going to switch into mech? We have had a couple games where players will go stim bio oh, and this... like push out a little bit and then just abandon the tech entirely. I wonder if this might be for some kind of hellbat timing. He does have four Hellions that oh, he's that not would make using more sense. for map yeah. control. He's just kind of banking them here in the main. Two medevacs going to be coming out shortly. As Reapers eventually do, will get cleaned up. At least one of them will. Okay, the Hellions are in a really good spot here. They're going to soften those Zerglings up. 
You can see Mario is still on the move, and I think you're right. I think I was totally wrong. I casted an ASL game just two weeks ago where they did do this. <laughs> no, Mario. It's starting to have one where I'm like, oh, he's going to do that same thing. But no, you're completely right. This would make much more sense for Hellbats. The wall ends up. The attack mm. over on the um, the tech lab could deny that upgrade. But what about the push that's going to come out over here? I like this decision by Scarlet. Take down combat shields. That's a critical upgrade here with a mostly marine-based army. That's a lot of Queen's taste list. A lot of energy is available for Transfuse. That's going to mitigate the efficacy of these Hellbats quite a bit. So Maru, even though that Scarlet was counterattacking and going for that combat shield denial on his side of the map, isn't able to find much damage on her fourth. That's right. We've got Ebo Chambers coming down here now. Um, and, I mean, it doesn't seem like Morrow's going to get anywhere with this push. It seems like Scarlet had exactly enough to make that really have no impact at all. So she's on four bases. Um, drones are just now being made and sent over there. Maru is just now landing his third base. So we don't have any workers there yet. There will be some sent out soon. But right now, it's look. it does appear that we're slowly progressing towards a pretty dramatic macro game here. Yeah, especially with all these barracks coming down now for Maro, it seems like he might be intending on sticking with three bases for quite a while. I think he might actually be going up to eight barracks, if I'm not mistaken. So certainly going to be a ton of production on the table for him soon. But for now, Scarlet's really playing kind of a flawless CBT. She hasn't taken any significant damage. Even the three racks, or not the three racks, excuse me, the two racks Reaper opening didn't get a single drone. She's been able to parry pretty much every attack that Maru has sent her way, and now she's going into a Hydralisk den with a new patch. Those upgrades, Hydra speed and range, will be completing more quickly than usual. Upgrades not too far behind the Terran either, so I'm loving this game for Scarlet right now. Already at 85 drones. Yeah, she seems to be in very good shape. We basically have roaming, but this isn't any kind of committed attack here from Maro. He's just trying to clean up whatever kind of creep tumors he can find. We're gonna have uh, the drone come over here. I don't even know that this can be denied. I think the links are just too on top of these medevacs. And so Scarlet is rapidly continuing to grow out on the map. We have that base that was taken just south of the screenshot here. All the way in the top left bases are being taken as well. Um, I gotta say, Scarlet's looking really good this game. Yeah, she's looking very strong. And I love this double expand. Just in case one of these, drop one of these bases do get denied by a drop, Scarlet is still going to have that extra base on the other side. So even this hatch going to cancel here, it doesn't hurt that bad. As, she, as you pointed out, she has that safety hatchery all the way up in the top left. So her mining, it won't be affected very much by this harassment. She just has to mitigate any further damage. This map does feel bigger than some of the maps we've had in the past. And I wonder if that is partially what's lending, uh, you know, this to Scarlet a little bit more easily as far as oh. growth goes. Hold on, we've got... Are those not hotkeyed? Oh, that's weird. Oh, I wish we could go back to that, actually. Yeah, there's no add-ons, and there were no units being produced, so... Let's see if the uh, observers highlight that again. For now, Maru is continuing to poke forward on this fourth base. This is a really good position for Maru. Mm -hmm. Scarlet should have the muscle to overpower this if uh, she can get, get down there in time. It looks like she's going to morph some more Banelings. The tank is really aiding here. A lot of these uh, shellings over here on those queens are huge. Here come the Banelings spilling in. A lot of the infantry taking a ton of damage here. The spread is still looking really healthy here for Maru, to be honest. A Whoa. Lot of, a lot of Marines remain here for Maru. So Scarlet, although the initial trade looked very good, man, if only those Lings from the main base were here fighting, oh. I think she would have been able to clean up all of those Marines. They were so yeah. low on HP. But instead, the Triangle Third is just getting battered. Absolutely shelled by these Siege Tanks. And I think Scarlet might have even forgotten about the Lings I, in the main. I think she is, does not know. You know, she, I don't think she's one of the pros that uses like the grab all units button very often. No, she's um, usually very good with her control. Yeah, and so because of that, the, the, yeah, it, it just seems like the, the tank position is very tough to bust here. Now, it seems like just barely Scarlet's gonna drive this away, but we see reinforcements moving across the map. And you know, when Zerg dies, it's usually not with the first initial push, it's that wave after wave come in and you know there's just not quite enough banelings there's not enough queens there's not enough stuff that allows you to have that kind of sustainability in the fight um but in a change of pace tomorrow's going to try to uh hack and saw his way through the creep and then go right up here to this fresh base at the top yeah and that's our rich best being geyser base too so a lot of potential banelings getting denied here by this gas mining getting interrupted 
Luckily, the hatch will survive, but seven drones do go down. Meanwhile, Maru mustering more forces at the Zelnaga Tower in the center of the map. Those Lings still in Sasha's main. I mean, I wish Scarlet had those in the initial fight. I mean, the defense was still immaculate. She was able to hold on to Spider, and now finally she realizes the Lings are coming, entering the fray. I'm sure Scarlet is kind of scratching her head about that one. Sitting at 95 drones, it's a miracle she was able to defend earlier. And hopefully now, having all of her army collected, She'll be able to stem the tide a little bit as Maru's looking to try and push through the center. And now Maru hitting in two different locations. I'm not sure if Scarlet can actually defend both. I'm seeing just one Hydralis down here. A lot of drones are going to be killed off if Scarlet doesn't pull them away soon. The Lynx come up and drive this back, but meanwhile, another attack is already ready um, to push up over here. We actually have the fourth command center finally being made. Scarlet's been on several bases, but some of them have been barely mining. You can see this hatchery is so low. Yeah, that hatchery is going to go down very shortly here, but actually Marge is taking the fight here, shelling down these Hydras. Siege Tank Fire comes in, running away from these Veilings. Actually, very good connections there for Scarlet, able to push them away, also deflecting the drop at the top left of the map, but this base is so low on HP. And I think this actually could be close to the breaking point. That tank, is, sorry, that uh, hatchery is so low. Looks like it's just Lings and Hydras fighting back. More reinforcements are gonna come into play here. If the Banelings can't get high enough in numbers, you know, eventually, stiffed Marines and tanks will overpower that. There's the gold base being mined from. That's gonna be a lot more Marines uh, to add into this mix. The lights never turn off back in Morrow's base. There's always more uh, infantry and tanks coming out. Now, Maru's picked up. Keep in mind that there are like two very weak points that actually haven't been broken here. So Scarlet's still in the game. I keep calling it like it's about to end because it seems like it is, but at the last second, Scarlet actually manages oh. to save the day. Oh man, you can almost feel the patch right there. Fungal with a little bit less range. Scarlet, despite having those high energy infestors, was not able to catch those fleeing medevacs. Luckily able to dispatch the one there on the top left side of the map. Upgrades now 2-2 for both players, and Maru going for what's basically a Zoom drop, and I think Scarlet has caught wind of this. Okay, they're gonna start pushing up over here, and this is a pretty good bridge to try to take a fight on. If you can just get a couple tanks in there, and then have an area to retreat behind. Oh, this could be huge. Fungal oh, coming in against oh, every single Marine! The chain Fungal comes through, the Hydras are gonna clean up the Metavax, and Scarlet with some incredible catching there. Gets so much army supply from Maru, and at the same time, on the top left side of the map, she's taking down that force. She's raiding the gold base, and I think she might have finally done it. I think she did. And you're just seeing Maru's supply plummet below 100. GG, Scarlet takes game one. What? That was crazy. And by the way, it really looked like Maru was on the verge of winning that so many times. But that chain fungal, the value, the medevacs killed, the Marines taken out, the fact that Really, the only way for that gold base command center to stay alive is that the Terran attack never stops. And when it does stop, guess what? You kill that base, Terran's on three bases. And you can see Scarlet almost, you know, blinking, raising her eyebrows like she can't believe it. I mean, remember those lings that were in the main base when yeah. what I feel was the, the critical push of the game of the triangle third. It hit. You would feel like if you have those lings, you're able to wipe everything off the floor. Instead, Scarlet wasn't able to do it. And despite that, she still won the game. So certainly an eyebrow-raising moment to go up against Maru. I mean, the favorite coming into any GSL to win it. And despite a hiccup like that one, still coming through with a win. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go to map two. I mean, hey, we said... If Maru loses, it's probably the craziest upset we could have for this round of the GSL. Maybe we get it. Let's see. Again, another new map. This time it's going to be on Site Delta. Let's get into it. This best of three continuing on. Side Maru. <laughs> Shopify Rebellion Scarlet. Big cheers here from the crowd for Scarlet. Yeah, people are hyped. Already a crazy game one. 
Um, so, look, these maps, they're all very new, so we're kind of still getting the hang of them here, but this does seem to be a map that's a little bit um, more claustrophobic. Yeah, a so. little bit. Oh, right, from so Canada, Canada support. Uh, yeah, of course you. they're going to be cheering for Scarlet. Ooh, even a tasteless heart. heart. Look at I like that. that. <laughs> I like that. It took a picture of my heart. That's embarrassing, <laughs> actually. I feel exposed. <laughs> this is, um, is going to be a map where I feel like if Scarlet's going to win, it can't be the same way. I do feel like, and you know, it's always easy as the game picks up to kind of see. You can feel the size of the map when you mm -hmm. watch two pros play and, you know, how far uh, of a distance it is to push and how, uh, you know, how many ways the Zerg can try to run around and counterattack and all that. This just seems like one where they're close together. They're kind of smushed up compared to map one. So that's not necessarily bad for Zerg. It would be bad for Zerg if Zerg tried to play like they did in game one. But Zergs can go for rushes. They can go for weird cheeses. They can go for something like uh, kind of like that battle Zerg style where they look mm -hmm. for a fight in the middle of the map. Yeah, side delta certainly plays a little bit different from outsiding. I mean, you have a couple options in terms of where you want to expand. You go for the triangle third. You take the linear base instead as your third. And then from there, where do you go for the fourth is Maru opening with double marine is actually going to be able to catch this overlord coming across the map. That's a pretty significant e road bump here for Scarlet's build. She's going to have to build two overlords now at kind of a critical junction where her hatchery at the expansion and is just getting set up. Sorry, there's actually three uh, barracks is being made in total here. Oh, there's an. Oh, there's, there's actually a one fourth too. one being made. So this is another thing that Beyond used to do. Great catch. Um, I wasn't looking at that. But the fact that Scarlet lost that Overlord is really bad. That's not something you factor into your build. Like, what if they catch my first Overlord coming across the map? So I don't know how familiar Scarlet was with this map, but clearly Maro did his homework and knew where the Overlord would be, uh, or roughly where it would be, and caught it. But okay, this strategy that's coming here from uh, Maro, it's not without my own criticisms. If, if this doesn't do any damage, you are just stuck. But this is also a map where it seems like the third base is a pretty desirable target. The second base is separated from the third base in a way that it would require its own defensive setup. So there are some ideas at play here. Yeah, there's also a significant number of choke points that you kind of can go to and there are too many pads in the early game as a Zerg to try and spread your creep across that when this push comes across the map I feel like Maru should be able to find some opening where the creep is lacking or the, or the defenses are lacking or as you said the Zerg isn't able to consolidate their forces just in the natural or just in the third base and get some damage and I'm liking this build from Maru it's a great selection here on site Delta the factory is going to be really late but I love the way the build has lined up right from the beginning, going for that gas, pulling off of the gas as the command center was getting set up and emphasizing the minerals, getting four barracks, but one with a reactor, so basically a five barracks in terms of production with stim and combat shield push gonna come out. And Maru's even not really revealing his full hand. He's showing six Marines, not more than that. And the scary thing about this push is it doesn't have to straight up end the game. As long as it does damage, which I feel like it's almost guaranteed to do some amount of damage. Yeah. Behind it, you're going to have a factory eventually, you're going to have a starport eventually, and you can kind of wiggle your way into a game where you're just playing a regular bio setup just with less tanks. You can see how the initial group of infantry is coming out to make it look like you know, this little expedition moving out is all he's got. Mm -hmm. Scarlet's aware that she'll, you know, she'll need to check up in here, but really Maro's masked this perfectly. Scarlet scouted as much as she possibly could, and Maro's never shown Oh anything. my oh goodness. Oh my god. Yeah, there's no transition right. out of this. <laughs> Take that back. It's an SCV poll, and there is no bailing Nest Tasteless. I mean, oh. is there a way to survive this? I don't know. And notice he's he's set the SCVs all the way down through the bottom. So he's uh, Scarlet's going to see this like as it arrives. I think this is a genius strategy here for Maru, but if it doesn't work, Maru loses. Everything is on the line right now with this push. Scarlet making nothing but Zerglings. Plus one Carapace is eons okay. away from okay. completion. She's being really smart. She's buying as much time as possible. She knows that oh. on creep, she's a little bit quicker. Stim she can comes intercept. In. Dude, okay, hold on. Stim comes in, and the queens are slowly getting pushed into a corner. Okay, this actually may be mm. game right here. It's a lot of damage. But keep in yeah. mind, there's going to be no healing on those Marines. True. Queens, they don't trade the best against this. And that next stim is going to be very expensive in terms of hit points. 
But still, I don't know if the link count's going to be high enough. I don't. I. I mean, Scarlet thinks that she needs to at least give this a shot to do anything. More links are going to come up. Oh. I mean, is this enough? Hold up. That's a lot of links coming in. Dude, hold up. The Marines are. Oh my God! I can't believe it. What? <laughs> what are we watching right now, Tasteless? The Evolution Chamber, it's getting recompleted. The fourth hatchery not even getting canceled. 50 drones to 23 SCVs. Scarlet is just pumping units out right now. And this incredible build that Maru brought to the table here in game number two, with this series on the line, has just completely fell apart. Well, I mean, where do you even go from here as Terran? You're stuck on caveman tech. Uh, you know, the Ling's, you know, when, when, when Reigns don't have the support of Metamax, Ling's over time can just surround them and beat them. They are brittle units. It's easy to forget when you see how much they can be healed. Maro's control is pretty good. He's going to win this fight. So, uh, Scarlet has to be very careful to not overextend. Creep tumors are going to be replanted here. Yeah, but soon Scarlet's going to be on five hatcheries. She's expanding to the 12 o'clock base as well. Maru, now at the seven minute, 12 second mark, is about to start his starport. Engineering bay not even completed. So Scarlet really leading on all fronts this, right now. This looks like a pre-Brood War, like 1998 <laughs> StarCraft <laughs> one game where one person's just making Zerglings, the other one's just making Marines. Yeah, it feels... Which, by the way, if you, if you go that route, the Zerg wins. Feels unique, but I mean, Maru isn't completely out of the game. Let's keep in mind that he killed a lot of queens there. Yeah. Scarlet, she cut drones for a very long time. The lair only just now completing. She's and certainly very far ahead, but there are some chances for Maru. Once he gets those medivacs out, if he's able to find some really clutch damage somehow and start to pull Scarlet apart, there is an avenue to victory, but it feels like it is such an uphill battle right now. I feel like you could just bailing bust here, right? I think Scarlet's thinking the same thing. She's I've... not gone above 47 drones. Centrifugal Hooks is underway. Oh, she's going to go for the surround on these. These Marines, they're stuck in the open. Big connections with the Bailings. And now the Lings are trying to flood in. They're getting down through the depot, surrounding the siege tank. Bailey's getting into the mineral line. SCV's going down. And Scarlet just broke Maru. <laughs> That's a 2-0 win. I can't believe this. Oh, and yeah, it's Scarlet's laughing. She did it again. Wow. Never count her out. All right, well, um, seven-time GSL champion is, for season three, going to be the first player going into the loser's match here in this group. That is incredible. I mean, this is one of the biggest upsets you could have possibly imagined. This is probably the, into... one of the biggest upsets of the whole year. Amaru just almost looks shell-shocked by this series. Well, also that strategy he elected to go with. Like, there's there's something to that where he's like, no, I will just hit you with the sharpest timing ever. And what Scarlet did was she just sort of ran around it in circles, knowing that, like, Marines without Metavax are actually bad. You just need enough Zerglings. Short break, guys. We'll be right back. 